So turbulence, some of the worst turbulence really associated with the jet stream. But there's two places where you'll see turbulence. If you're flying at lower altitudes, below about 30,000 feet, you'll get it from mostly storms developing. You get these rising columns of air. You know how you see the experts talk about how those rising columns of air build the storms and the bright white clouds and the higher cloud tops. So when you're flying through that, that'll give you some bounce. But if you get above that into the jet stream at about 30,000 feet, the winds of the jet stream normally run about 120 plus miles an hour. So you get in there, but you're going to get columns, little pockets of stronger air in there. And sometimes it's above 200 miles an hour in a very strong jet. With that, you'll get some mixing of those strong winds and they'll be almost a little spiral. So if your plane gets involved in that at high altitudes on a long flight, the pilot has to take you out of that or you're just going to get tossed on a regular basis as you fly through here. But if the pilot can get you down or up into a more calm altitude, then you'll immediately be out of it no problem at all. Sometimes pilots don't get a lot of advance notice. They're in constant communication with each other. So if I'm ahead of Maria in an airplane and I'm a fly at uh, pilot, I'll say, guess what? I just got turbulence at this altitude right here. And the next person knows to avoid it. Maria, it's one of those things that when we're traveling, everybody's thinking about it now after seeing those pictures, but that's how it is. Planes are developed to stay in the air uh, and, and developed to take turbulence, but there can certainly be some damage inside them.